Doing here, so I've run that timber down this line here. Just going to use this bit of stock material, non bit of material, place it in like that, and then all I'll do use a bit of this stock to mark the line, and then that's just going to be a straight cut down on that angle. So, there it is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that through there, put that in, then get that piece then cut. So, cut that by hand. What's that? Now, what I'll do is I'll just tap that into line. There we go, it's got a nice line to that now. There we go. That's it, that's going to be my saw cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that saw cut there, just further on so we can get a decent, obviously all the material, straight through there by hand, that's it. I'll line that through, you see? You can see the angle, I've got the plate on there in the way. Here, which is fine, so all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark that there. I can then cut that up. Now this one just needs to be square here, doesn't it? Here. Just need that angle on there now to pull it in. I'm going to back that off there like that, all the way along. So that's going to be the angle I'm going to cut through by hand now. Beautiful. So I'm going to do now is just tack it all in. That's it. That's why I like to walk on 4x2 instead of batten, I feel a lot safer. Now this is where the theory, if you dump one off another and then whatever that is, so what have we got Pete? 1750 minus 975. So look guys, this is one way you can do it, but I always double check, I like to double check. 1750 minus, minus 975 equals, so if I add then 775 onto that long measurement, so the next measurement we're going to measure and just check should be 2525, but it isn't always the case because it's the roof at the end of the day. But let's have a look at that measurement and see how close we get to that. How close do you think it might be? I reckon it'll, it's got to be within half inch, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh my god, Pete. What have we got? 
It's only 2527. Two mil out. Two mil out. Two mil out. Two mil out. So that theory works well. I could actually knock in a two a five uh two five, but two five. because I mark these at six hundreds, I'm just gonna pinch that a little bit. The extra two mil make no difference on this roof. Two five, two five then yeah. yeah, and then the last one then peak. So it'll be seven, 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 won't it? Yeah. So plus then seven 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 equals that should be then three meters three hundred and two mil let's check that shall we guys let's have a look and it should be three three oh two and it's three three oh two look at that peter there we go on the money Three, three, three. 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 the jacks onto the hips and everything what we're going to do now is we're going to put some timbers in between each of the rafters now which means that then will then to do his label we be absolutely spot on any uh, worried about anything so um just got to sort that out now with a load of 4 2 <laughs> That's why I like my bench is lower, so I can get my knee over it. It's really uh, one of those key things that I love. I hate benches that are really tall. There we go, numbered it, number three. Pete's doing now, we've taken all the measurements. Pete's gonna go down, cut all the four rafters that we need, and then we're gonna get them in just before break, and then we're gonna have a break, because a well deserved break. Yeah, same yeah, thing. Do that. No, just me, it does. No, just me, it does. <laughs> Where's yours? Where's yours, eh? Yeah, well, yeah. blazer, wait for a blazer. Yeah, I'll sit anyway. Do you know how difficult yeah. it is to get the Makita blazer, mate? Yeah. I mean, like, why invent, like, HGT and then suddenly you have to order the blazer online? You can't get them from any shop anywhere. <laughs> Do you like Lab Heat? <laughs> I like the way you made out there with like like a secret that? weapon. See, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You can see that's now. Good, Amazing. Good. Uh, let me have a go with this DeWalt. Let's see how it bears, Pete. Oh, light hey, butter. Look, that, that's with a blunt blade. Oh, that's the difference. That's the you extra. You know what? The I have extra to say, that challenges the Mikita that does, mate. That's it. So, no, it feels like it's got a bit more grunt to it. Yeah, know? 14 more volts, mate. That's oh, what it is. That's a really, really good day today. I mean, you can see the weather. We've been fighting against it. Me, Pete, oh, we've done all of the infilling. Doing the relevant jacks, they're all in now. Uh, we've done all the infilling on the other side. We've just got a, a box gutter to do where the chimney stack is. We've already done the main big one at the back. It's just obviously where it comes round and drops in. Just got to get that done tomorrow, and then we can then get all the soffit and fascia timber work in, ready then for the actual soffit and fascia. 
So hopefully by Wednesday night, we're actually gonna be watertight, which is gonna be really, really cool. So I'm really pleased about it because uh, originally on the plan, it was gonna be Friday. So we're gonna be a couple of days ahead, which is uh, a big plus. So. Good morning, a nice early start again. Obviously you can tell the winter uh, months are now creeping in. Just got arrived here, one of the lads has just come now. So we're cracking on, uh, we've got a lot to do today. Uh, we had a really good day yesterday. Absolutely cracked loads of it out, which is really, really good. Just getting into the site now. So what we're gonna do is set the ladder up. I'm gonna go upstairs, have a walk around the roof. I'm just gonna get myself set up. Ah, look, some of my blades have arrived. Yes, I've been waiting for this now. These are really, really hard to get hold of just from local suppliers like tool station screw fix. Is that a, this sort of size blade? Yeah, it is. Have you got one? No. I had to order them online. So there's four of them that's arrived. Got another two. Throw them in the van. I'm going to set them up in the new saws as well. So happy days. That's so good news. So what we've got here, we've just set up a couple of tents in the back garden for Alex to start cutting the insulation. Last night we covered all this section all up, wrapped it all around. So we've just now got to disconnect it all, get that sorted. Ollie and Mark are going to be working on this side. They're going to get the box gutters in. We'll uh, start cutting all the rafters. Going to get the fascias and soffits all done as well. Going to move on to those and then get them fitted. So hopefully by Wednesday night, we're pretty much where we need to be, get it watertight. And then we can lift the G-decking one more lift to get it to a decent roof height uh, and we can get it felted. And then on Friday, we then got the patio in the back arriving. So I'm really looking forward to that. Once that's in, once we got watertight, we can then actually then start to get the underfloor heating down and get that through and get the screed down before Christmas as planned. Al's been putting the breather membrane batten in. Uh, even though the membrane that we're using is an amazing membrane actually, you can actually don't need any breathable gap at all. It's a new felt, which I'm going to talk about in a separate video um, or just dedicate a little bit more time because I do think it's actually a really cracking product and a game changer. Uh, Ollie's working over there. He's going to put the other small jack in that side and then the other side. Me and Pete are going to be working on, we've already cut these rafters here on the plum cut. We're going to do all the seat cuts because then we're going to connect the ladder frame to the underneath. Just going to zip all these off all the way along here. The one thing I've just noticed, some of the battens are going to be in the way. So I'm going to have to cut the battens back, uh, which I'll do. So let's crack on. Let's get on with it and get some work done. Cracking on really, really well with the roof, Willis. I mean, he's making an absolutely beautiful job. Really, really pleased for uh, him and Jamie. Uh, Connor doing an absolutely beautiful job. We've got a lot of detailing going up around here. To cover the uh, copper nails there's a nice detail going all the way around like a lead dress we then obviously got the finials that Elliot came up with the idea of that that's rebated into that top of the frame which is nice we're going to put lead ceiling down this line here all the way down same on the other side there well then silicon and foam from the other side as well and then obviously we then finish up with the plasterboard the wheel's got all this section in we've used resi tricks on the bottom here just needs a good clean down bit of dust on it and then uh, we've then gone and used a lead flashing just here which is really nice but i'm really really pleased uh, to be fair i think will and jay are doing an absolutely brilliant job uh, as they always do you can see look the amount of cut that's had to go into down here all the work and the flashings that had to go underneath uh it's uh will's doing an absolutely beautiful job so it's really uh, coming really really nicely We've got a slate vent in here, and then obviously the, uh, the stack uh, vent as well. Val is all in. Obviously got the cuts up then for that. Wherever we can, we try to find reclaims or use some uh, old looking tile. Uh, Will's done a, an amazing job with this. I mean, it was a huge roof, a lot of tiles as well. So really pleased. Uh, right, so let me crack on with the rest of the roof. Um, this small extension that we're doing now. So just up here, getting some two by two start making some framework up just because it's a little bit more difficult I'm sliding this through cut that off like that and then I'll just plumb that down and then that'll just be a plumb cut on my saw at 45 degree get that done and then once I've done this I'll obviously halfway on this measure out because obviously this cut here will come on the return like that and then all I'll do is put a line from that point there run it all the way across mark it all up but most of these are actually done because the way all of the mono trusses are marrying all up, they look like they're level through beautifully, which is really nice. The other thing I've got to do, because obviously if I go that way, I'm just going to cut it off square and I don't want that. So I'm going to set this now to 45. Now the great thing about this saw is so you can go to 53 with this. Mm. 
You can see this, the blade started to bind because the way the timber slightly cambered. So all I did is just do a lower cut and then obviously made it wider. So as the blade was then going through, it then stopped binding on the back of the blade. So always remember that. So you can see now I've caught the line back in. I always like to leave the line slightly in like that or take, you know, half the line out. I'm not worried about this, obviously not finishing all the way through because the undercut and then by the time I bring that stud work through, this stud work through, it'll all latch on and be nice and strong anyway. Look at the height, I want to pull this through. I'm going to mark it on here and then square across, square across. So let's have a look. Just cleaning the screen for now. Right, there you go. That's so you, it. So we look better. Oh, that's good. Now you switched the lens, it looks like we're in the 1980s now, <laughs> don't it? Yeah. Obviously, this saw can't get in here. So what I'll do, I'll put this one by hand. All right, mate. Yeah, got enough, mate. Tighten her off. That's the only thing with wet weather. And when you're trying to do short lines over now, you're peeing them because of the wet. Just sometimes doesn't always happen. It's more level. Our, our level. Our level. Yeah, our level. <laughs> I'll do an ollie, I'll put my name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Crack on, baby, let's get done. Let's get it done. Right, so line up there, leveling it through. And yes, you're probably thinking why isn't he using the string line, but for me, this one I've got to make sure because of the timber that I'm going to be screwing to the bottom of it, it's going to be absolutely spot on. I tell you what, you are deadly. Carpenter doesn't bring, he knows he's doing the roof and doesn't bring any tools with I, got, I tell you what, I'll bring my, I'll bring right, my what sword do you reckon, tomorrow. Mate? I'll bring my do you reckon we should all have a kitty and, and, and buy some tools, mate? Yeah. If it's two pounds a month, you can buy Ollie a circuit saw for Yeah, yourself. that's it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See here, what I've done is I've just took the back of the blade out because it was starting to jam. And again, so the one thing I have noticed with this saw, even though I find it's actually really, really good, and I don't know whether everybody else finds it with other makes, but as the battery starts to die, it's definitely a big must to make sure that you change the battery straight away. So even if it's just down to his second cell, because obviously this one's got four cells, I know as soon as it gets down to the second cell, maybe just dropping below that, the, the blade does not like it at all. So it's a definite must that uh, you can actually see it starts to burn it slightly. So this one uh, definite thing I've taken away. Uh, great, love using it. Uh, I use it on a plunge basis because uh, I'm years and years of uh, working with these. That's why I'll... They go very quick, don't they? That's the why, you know, when the other saw used in that, that's why it completely, the blade completely burnt because the batteries weren't hard, holding charge. So every time you did a cut, it was just dying. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. It was every every single yeah. cut that I was doing it, the battery was like, yeah, dead. You can see I've been cutting all the way along here, but the reason I cut this back bit out here because the back of the blade was catching. Uh, I already said earlier, but... <laughs> I'm going to finish zipping across here now. You can see also I leave my pencil line slightly in. I could have it in. So. There we go. You can hear the blade binding then. So I went back on myself, cut a little bit more out, and then went for the cut again. It's really important to listen to the blade, listen to the tools. Uh, I was taught that in the uh, early joinery shop. And that's the same with routers when you're using router cuts, always listen to the tool. There you go. Well right, right done Pete. Right, coming to you. Okay. That's it. First mass in, mate. And so the reason we put some double rafters in, the client wants to put a Velux just in between these two rafters here to allow some light to come into the walkie wardrobe.
Definitely guys, if you're doing a load of work in the Warwickshire area, definitely check out Bates Timber. I met Pete, the MD, really, really cool bloke, and uh, the prices on the timber are absolutely spot on. It really was, they cheaper than anybody else, so. timber strut goes in underneath we can then use it and just get a really good mechanical fix in here absolutely solid there which is great and this is uh, C mate okay that's it mate I'm going to start making them cages I'll drop down with him and we'll start getting that all screwed together with a load of four inch screws once we've got the underneath cradles all we've got to do then is get the upright timbers in and then we're away So hopefully Pete will pick the longest shoulder for the mitre. And then see which is the longest. That's it. Okay mate, right, we'll mark that up as D so we don't get confused. What we're doing is we've got a, a, a lovely uh, detail soffit and fascia makeup. So what we've done, we've plumbed and cut everything up. The actual soffit is then going to project out 430 mil. It then means that what we're going to do then after that, we're going to put a fixing on here, uh, the fascia, this detail over here. That's going to come round through, lines up with the top of the lintel beautifully, that will come through. It finishes about here, and then what we're going to do is have a secondary uh, fascia on that will come through then. But what will happen is before we put that piece there, we'll actually put the actual cages which are down there. We'll fit them to the underneath, make sure the measurement's correct. And what we'll then do is put a temporary piece of MDF on the underneath the same thickness of what the soffit is and then we'll actually bring the second ball then to it like that that means that when we then put the actual soffit in it's actually then going to be in the right place to this which will be absolutely beautiful yeah it looks good with the head doesn't it yeah. you got it go for it so i'm going to go for one that should be a header there then yeah theory Really soft brick, aren't they, mate? Is it finish all right? It's spot on, mate. Yeah, beautiful. That's it. Yeah. There you go, mate. Sometimes you need to be gentle, Pete. That looks lovely, mate, doesn't it? Well done, mate. That's it, mate. So we can leave it like that. What we'll do is... 
Can't get any better than that, can I? It's near enough, it? That's for 20 now. That looks much better already. Started ready. Has anyone got a 90 on them? Yeah. Yeah, I got loads here, mate. Yeah, Pete. Got. Oh, his nair dropped. Not bad, is it? Tell you what, I'll you put a screw in just at the back here. Yeah. I'll hold it there for you, mate, okay? Okay. Okay. Go for it, mate. Right, so moment, I'm just putting some blocks in and the reason I'm putting these blocks in because what I want to do is I want to locate it underneath what it means is then this softwood that's going to be pushing up to it will then actually then come to the underneath and take that out that means then I can actually get the soffit then to run through and just sit then straight on top of the uh, new piece that we're going to put on Now, looking at where I'm screwing at the moment, you can see where it's fixing here, just down below. All I'll do is put another one in here as well. Another one in there, and then what I'm gonna do is every 600, I wanna get a really good mechanical fix in. There we go, halfway to them two is 38. Thing I will do, make my life a bit easier so I'm not trying to hold screws on an angle. Same again, lift it up, push it that way, nice and tight against the wall. thing is just tapping in as well just pushing it down nicely for me means to fix this in I was in I haven't done the corner yet because obviously I want the other one to come up to it just means the other board's just gonna slot in like that lovely once it's in I can then get a mechanical fix in it then so let's get a load of glue on that always put glue on both sides never just one and yes I do like a lot of glue well, that's me. Now that's why I love England. I love the seasons in England. Look at that sun. I mean, it's November and look at that. Sun starting to set. You couldn't ask for anything more beautiful. Great day's graft. I mean, we've absolutely smashed it today. And then to go home in a sunset like this, just like, that's why I love Britain. We are the best. <laughs> Hey you beautiful people, another beautiful day. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so every time we upload a video, you'll be notified. So have an awesome week. See you soon guys on the next vlog.